So we've got our dice right here. It looks pretty good, but we can make it a little bit better. Let's actually go back to that side six. I'm going to show you that second way that we can do this. Let's add those all back here. Add my faces all back. Uh, I want to edit my side six side sketch. So I'm going to find that over here. That's sketch seven. So I can double click it. The nice thing about CAD is if I wanted to make any changes, like if I wanted to make this one bigger or smaller, let's change that to one. And now when I go back, it automatically made that update for me. So the nice thing is I can go back, make a lot of changes as I need to. Uh, all right, so I'm going to edit this sketch. I'm going to hit N for normal. And let's do the site all over again. Let's just delete it all. And so I just hit delete on the keyboard. And let's do side six with uh, multiple uh, sides that I'm using a mirror for. So do, 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 let's add one dot on here. So I'm going to add one dot up here that's four over, four down, and it's three millimeters. So remember, I'm doing the side with six. So I'm going to make a circle. Click, move, click. I'm going to make it three millimeters. Enter. Now I'm going to put it in the right place. So I'm going to use my dimension button right here. Dimension. I'm going to click the center of my circle to the top edge. I want that to be click four millimeters. I want the center of that to be side edge to be four millimeters. So that again was that dimension button. So now let's use what's called the mirror button. Now first let's find the mirror button. There's the mirror button right there. So what mirror is going to do is it's going to make a copy. It's going to make it symmetrical just like it's bouncing off of a mirror. If you're never sure where a button is, if I go to this tools button right here, click on that, and if I type in mirror, there you go, it's going to tell me where the mirror button is. So let's click on mirror. It says select a mirror line. So since we drew this with our origin in the very center, this plane right here acts like our mirror line. So I'm going to click that plane. Right? Select entities to be mirrored. I want this circle. So I'm going to click on that. And look at that. It automatically made one jump across to the other side there. Excellent. Well, now, good. So I'm going to click that mirror button again just to turn that off. So now I want both of these to go down. So I can use my mirror button again. Select my mirror line. I'm going to click this plane right here. And then I'm going to select, select entities to be mirrored, this one and this one. Excellent. So now I have four. And then if I just want to make those last two, click on my circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse up to this dot right here. I'm going to move it down slightly. And you see that dotted line. And that just shows me that it's lined up. It's coincidental with it. Those are constraints. And then if I brought it down to that midpoint, I see that other dotted line right there. Click, move, click, three, enter. Excellent. And then if I wanted to, I could use that mirror button again. Select my mirror lines, that plane. What, that one. Good, check. Cool, so there's my six that I used. Let me extrude those. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my six that I made using the mirror tool. So it made it a little bit different. And I'm going to remove them. Excellent. And since I deleted that before, I lost my little white paint in there. So let's use my appearance panel. This face, let's click on that. Let's double click on that. And let's click on my extrusion. Now it says extrude eight. It's OK. Click on that. Check. Done. Excellent. So now that's all colored in. Uh, to get rid of this panel, just hit that little button right there again. It goes away. All right, so this looks good, but that doesn't look like that. Right, I want to make it a little bit prettier. 
So one thing I can do is called fillets. So let me get rid of these planes. Right, so what a fillet is, is if I look at my piece of paper right here. Let's come over here to a new sheet right here. So if I have an angle, a right angle, or any angle. I can make what's called a fillet, which is kind of a round over like that to kind of cut it, kind of smooth it out right there. So a little box right here. So that was a rectangle, and then that's rounded over to make a fillet. All right, it just makes things look better, makes things feel better in your hand. So it rounds it off like that. Now the way you measure a fillet is the radius. So I would imagine that this is the center of my circle. This is my radius, so right here on my piece of paper, that's an inch, so this would be a one inch radius for this circle right there. So that would be a one inch fillet right there. Uh, similar to a fillet is called a chamfer, so if I had that and I wanted to kind of just chop that off at a 45 degree angle, get rid of that, that's called a chamfer, so it would come up at an angle and then over like that. So just a little bit, a couple different ways to play with the edges of objects. So in on shape, I've got this button right here. And this is entirely optional. This just makes it look a little bit better. When I hit the down arrow, I've got fillet, I've got chamfer, I've got draft. Draft kind of comes up at an angle. Rib adds a little rib in there. Shell, that makes it hollow. So if I wanted to make a hollow dice, that's how I could do it. And hole just drills a hole in it. Um, so fillet and chamfer are probably the two that you're going to use the most. So this one I use a fillet which is round versus a chamfer which is flat. So I'm going to click on that tool. Click on fillet. Entities to fillet. So it wants me to select edges. So I'm going to click on these edges and you can see it rounds it over for me. So that looks nice. I can do this and I can go through all of these edges. I think there should be 12 if this is a cube. And you can see they turn orange when I've got them all. So there we go. I've got them all right there. So this one right now is set to 2. We can play around with this. Um, so this is, you know, that circle right there, the radius of that circle. Let's just get silly. Let's put 5. And I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard. Now, why didn't that look good? Why didn't that do anything? Because for some reason mathematically I can't have a five millimeter radius fillet. So let's go to four. I think probably two is probably the three. Alright, it doesn't like three either. Two, we know it likes two. One, you can see there's a little bit less of a rounded edge. I can even do like 0 0.5. See so that looks. All right, sorry, there's a announcement right there. So like a 0 0.5 would be a really small little round over like there. So that's actually looks more like these ones right here. But if I wanted a more rounded one, again, I've got everything over here on my left hand menu. I can double click it. I can bring that up to two, and it's just going to re-update it. So that looks pretty good. So that looks a little bit better. Um, if I wanted to get rid of these lines, that's just how it's displayed. So this little camera and render options button, I can do shaded without the edges. So that looks pretty good. I can do shaded with hidden edges so I can see through it if I needed to. I can say hidden edges removed. So that's just kind of like a black and white line drawing, hidden edges visible, that's kind of if I could see through it. Translucence, like if it was made out of glass. And you can play around with these. I'm going to go back to shaded, just back to where we were. Also in this menu is some different views. So this is called an isometric view right here. So we'll use the isometric view a lot. Diametric Trimetric, don't worry about those. We use isometric a lot. And then one thing that's going to look weird 
So if I turn perspective on, it's going to shift it all around. So this is kind of more your artistic looking, where you've got those vanishing lines, the uh, perspective lines. So this is kind of a more realistic version of it. And then this is going to look really weird when I go back. I go back to turn perspective off. So now it looks really bonkers for us. But this is kind of a more engineering drawing where it's not artistically correct, but this edge is parallel to this edge, which is parallel to this edge, which is what we want for engineering, to see what's parallel and everything. Um, one other thing we can do that I did with Maya, if I look at my little pips on there, they are not perfectly cylindrical like this. So just one other change I'm going to make real quick. I'm going to come back here to, let's see, extrude 1 was when I made a cube. Extrude 2 is when I first made that circular hole right there. If I add what's called draft, here, let's play around with this for a second right here. What draft is, is it comes in at an angle, either outward or inward. So you can see right here, it's defaulting to 3 degrees. If I put it at 15 degrees, you can see that's going to come out at a 15 degree angle. This angle right here is that draft angle. If I switch it opposite direction, click this button, it's going to go inward at a 15 degree angle. Um, that's used in manufacturing. Uh, it's called your draft angle. Uh, other CAD programs, you might see it called taper, but it does the same thing. So let's go back here. Let's put it back to how it was. Here, let's undo that. Hit. All right. Let's come here, double click it, and let's just play around with this. Let's add draft. Let's add uh, a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to hit tab just so I can preview it. That doesn't look good. Let's redo the opposite direction. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. Actually, let's change that even more. So I can go back here, double click on that. Let's change that to 50 degrees or 60 degrees. There we go. See, now you can see that looks a little bit more realistic to how my dice look versus that perfect cylinder right there. Now, if I just want to do that quickly, so that was extrusion two, extrusion three, there's my twos on the other side, draft 60, change side, yep, cool, all right, and extrusion four, draft 60, change sides, now I'm just doing this quickly, Again, entirely optional, not necessary. Draft 60. I'm just showing you how I did it to give it a more realistic look. And this just shows you that, you know, however you have it, you can always go back and make some changes to it. And it will do its best to follow those changes. So there you go. Let's turn those lines off. And now we've got a nice, beautiful die right there. So that's the one that I showed you in the little example at the very beginning. This is the exact same right here. All right. So as always, this is you know your project. Change the color if you want to. Change the color of the pips you want to. Make it look pretty. Play around with some of the other options if you want to. But there we go. There is your first beautiful six-sided die in Unshape.